Earlier this month, I went to the happiest place on earth, where I assume is most people's happiest <laughs> place on earth, Target. And as I was in Target, <laughs> I saw these two women at war with each other. And one of them was an employee, one of them was a customer. And this specific <laughs> Target had uh, changed the line situation somehow. And the customer was not happy about it. And she let the employee know it. She just said, you need to do the signs better. There needs to be more signs. You need to do the lines better. She was so upset. And she says, you know, you need to help me know how to do this. I've never done this before. And the employee was shaking and she responds, for sure. <laughs> There should probably be better signs. I don't really know what I'm doing. I could do this better. I'm so sorry. The customer yells at her one more time. You need to do your job better. And then the employee says, I've also never done this before. And as I was watching these two women, it was like seeing myself in two forms. I was like, I can totally relate to these two women. Like one of these women is like, we are in a situation in our lives that we've never been in before and other people are supposed to help me. And the other girl was feeling like, man, I'm supposed to be helping people. This is my job. Why don't I know how to do this better? And in that moment, I saw myself in both of these women in times when I felt like other people need to be helping me out. Other people need to be helping me get through this situation, this season in my life. And I have just as much felt like this employee, like, man, I should be helping people better. Like, for sure, there should be better signs. Like, I'm sure I could be doing this better. <laughs> We're both in a really hard situation. And as I saw both of them and myself like a mirror through both of them, I honestly started to think in my own life, God, in what situations in my life am I one of these women not seeing the other woman's side? Like perhaps, perhaps there's a better way to communicate under pressure. Perhaps there's a better way mm -hmm. to see the other person's side under pressure. Like, God, what can I do under pressure so I am not also yelling at strangers at Target? <laughs> like, Lord, please help me. <laughs> and I think it's a question we need to ask ourselves in a conversation worth having. What are we doing under pressure? How are we seeing other people who could also be under pressure? Are we stopping and considering, man, this person might be grieving. This person might be going through a hard time. This teacher might be having a hard time. This parent might be having a hard time. Our pastor might be having a hard time. Our spouse might be having a hard time. Is there a perspective shift we could have when we're about to be aggressive towards someone? Is there a way that we could perhaps pause and say, in the middle of this pressure, I'm not going to let the enemy have victory over my emotions or my aggression. I'm going to pause and consider, is this person doing their best? What could they be going through and then proceed from there? I love the practical tool of taking the action to pursue a conversation. Mm. I love that so much because I think it can be so much easier to think of compassion or gentleness as something passive um, or sweet and meek and behind the scenes. Like I feel compassion at those people. I feel gentleness at those people as opposed to towards those people. What would it look like to have active compassion? What would it look like to have active gentleness? There's a commentator who talks a lot about gentleness and I love what he said. He said that gentleness is the act of saying, I'm going to fight for you, not against you. And I love that so much because I so often think of gentleness as like sweetness and, you know, um, something really beautiful and maybe even something passive. I'm gentle, I'm gentle, I'm gentle. But I love how this commentator brought it. You are gentle towards people. You have a gentle posture towards people, compassionate posture towards people. When you go into a situation and think, as I go into this hard conversation at work, as I have this confrontation with this friend, as I go into this, this hard situation or confrontation or conversation with my spouse, I'm going with the posture of I'm going to be for you and not against you. I'm going to fight for you in this situation. I don't need to win and you lose. I hope we both win. I hope the truth yeah. is ultimately what wins out. I hope reconciliation is ultimately yeah. what wins. And so I think compassion that is not active is not true compassion at all. And to be a gentle person does not mean to be a quiet person who's always sitting down doing nothing. It means to approach situations thinking, how could I fight for That's these people? Good. And if I can't do something I think I can t put my hands to, like how can I actively pray for them consistently? How can I actively have gentleness towards this woman at my church? How can I actively compa be compassionate towards this, this um, group of people at, you know, at my job? Compassion and gentleness is active. 
And I think the question we need to ask ourselves is not what do we feel towards people, but what are we actively doing to pursue reconciliation with each other and restorative relationships with one another. Mm -hmm. So I love, Natalie, that you talked about okay. having active conversation. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.